we should hopefully get some piece of that story at some point. Yeah. But obviously, the undertaking of moving a whole world before a star blows up would be massive to begin with. But like you said, they should have known that a long time in advance to start moving people off world way before they did. Yeah. yeah. I also find it interesting. There's nothing discussed about the Remans. <laughs> you know, I mean. At all. <laughs> at all. It's, it's, you know, it's it's one of those things where, you know, to to me, the Remans, uh, to to Starfleet, I guess, um, the synth workers, the labor force they developed, you know, the, the Romulans treated the Remans right the same way. They would just fodder for them or whatnot. So I'm sure I'm sure there was very little effort to help them. But it's just interesting that. When it comes to helping the Romulans, you would have thought the Federation would have negotiated something to say, yes, and we help the Remans too. And I think they were saying they would help all any and all planets impacted by the supernova, but you don't see a single Reman anywhere. Yeah, not not a mention of them to this point. We might no. get them. We never know. But to this point, no, nothing. Not Like, they don't even exist. Right. Um, the other thing about Picard being flawed or, you know, his one statement that really hit me in this episode was when he said, I allowed perfect to become the enemy of good. And that mm-hmm. goes back to what we were saying earlier with, he just kind of packed up shop and went into hiding. That's in, right. in the, in a few episodes ago, um, Rafi says to him 14 years ago, well, we'll get a ship. We'll do, we'll do something. Even if we only save 30 people or 40 people or a hundred people or 200 people, it's right. better than saving nobody. But because Picard couldn't save them all, he saved none. Well, it's, I think it was twofold. He couldn't save them all, but yet his pride was destroyed because he did not have the firepower that he thought he had as being Jean-Luc Picard. So it was both, right, in the sense. It's like he he just felt completely I – think, I think he was blown away when they accepted his resignation, just absolutely blown away. You know, he was the hero of the Federation, much like James Kirk or whatever. You know, same thing, Hold to that, held to that level, and um, – it it knocked him down so hard that he forgot truly it isn't about him, but he made it about him. Right. I agree. And we see this, we see things like this in my industry, in the construction industry, because you'll see like what I think happened here. I'm jumping ahead because in my head I already had this conversation. Um, mm-hmm. In my industry, what you'll have is, and what I think happened here was the top that would have never accepted Picard's resignation, because I think there was a point where they would never have accepted it. But I think they're all retired. And the new guard doesn't hold Picard in the same... They don't have the same revere for him, I guess, is the word I'm looking for, or whatever. Well, They don't yeah, idolize I mean, him as much. So they're, they're just like, okay, bye, we have new people coming in. And in my industry, we see this where a super of a company or you know, dad will retire and leave the company to the kids. Those top, top foremen... They're really not top foreman anymore because the people that are in now don't really know you in that way. Yeah. Well, you know, the the other element, uh, Patrick, that I think is important to remember, I think they said the number of humans killed on Mars was, what, 10,000 or was it more? Was yeah, no, it, I think it was 10,000. Was it 90,000? I don't know. It was a lot. It was a lot. And, you know, there, when you have that kind of um, death, when you have that kind of um, event like that. Uh, sometimes people are not looking through um, the lens the same way. Obviously, it was a, Picard when he was talking about Mars, even to Rafi, was almost dismissive of what that impact could be. Almost dismissive, you know. And it's like, well, people are scared and all that other stuff. Well, that's normal. Not everybody is wired like John Luke Picard, you know. We aren't right. for sure, right. right? I mean, we're not. Um, I, 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 after nine eleven, I was scared. You know, I was, I was, I was ticked off and ready to go, but I was scared. We all were. Um, it, Absolutely. It, you, you, you have to put things in a framework of what was going on in that time. And he might have been very tone deaf as to what was going on. You know, so, in other words, he could have had that discussion a few weeks later when people come to their senses and they realize that the sense are no longer a threat anywhere else or whatever. But it was literally as it was occurring, you know, finishing up all those things. Right, right. It, I like your analogy, too. So I looked it up. The attack on Mars resulted in deaths of over 90,000 and sweeping changes to Federation policy. So it was yeah. 90,000, which is ridiculous. You yeah. brought up 9-11. That was 32-something, right? It was three, 3,000. Yeah. yeah. And that created sweeping changes in America. 
in um, airplane travel and policies and, yep. uh, you know, from local to federal. So, you know, we're talking about a massive increase in death for 90,000. And um, like you said, you were you were a little scared. You were ready to go. I signed up for the military weeks after 9-11 happened because it happened. I mean, my dad was in Vietnam. So when I was a kid, I was going to go into the military. But as I got older, I went to college instead of the military. And then I was standing at St. John's when 9-11 happened and watched the buildings disappear. And basically the first time the recruiting offices opened up, I was inside. Mm-hmm. You know, so, yeah, it, so an event like that can change you in a split second. Oh, yeah. It changed and, my life completely. Yeah. Right. And so for this to – and I think that was the point of that short trek, right, that we saw just before this, was that those two girls' lives changed in a split second knowing that one of their parents were on Mars. Right, right. Their little incidental fight meant nothing now. Right, right which and w- was, it's, their, it's, was what their support. world revolved around. That's right. They, right. Their world revolved around their stupid fight over nothing, essentially. Mm-hmm. And now they realize, oh, man. Yeah. And and you could see how a um, a diplomat or how somebody who, um, you know, says the wrong thing or makes a mistake or whatnot during a time of crisis like that, like Picard did, potentially, um, theoretically, maybe, uh, and not being wise enough to kind of look at the overall situation you know, it's it's an odd thing to bring up um, certain subjects when you're in the middle of a crisis. You know, it just is. And, you know, it, there's so many things that um, this show has you thinking about because there's so many analogies going on with not only 9-11, because that's just one. But, you know, today and, and you know, the, 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 the changes that you're seeing geographically, it's like, you know, we just can't help ourselves. We, we have to react and do things that just, just take us in direction. Sometimes you, you cock your head, but I do think that, um, that, that is a very interesting thing for Picard is now that he's back and he's, he's trying to, to pull himself back up. You know, one of the things he hasn't talked about at all has been that loss of life. Not once. Yeah. Yeah. He hasn't brought it up. It's almost, I mean, it doesn't matter to him because Starfleet's failings outweigh 90,000 deaths. Yeah, but he's yeah, but he's also fought through being assimilated. He's fought through Wolf three five nine, where he caused the deaths of thousands of Federation um, officers and, and enlisted, whatever you know, Starfleet folks. Um, you know, to, I, I'm just saying he has a different view. Uh, you know, he's worlds destroyed, colonies absorbed. You know, the Dominion War, all that stuff. He front lines. You know, I, I'm just thinking he has a perspective that the folks on Earth and in other places who didn't weren't in the middle of it could never understand, you know. And so that tone deafness for not being able to relate to the common folks, let's say that and, and that put it in those terms, may have hurt him, you know, um, pretty badly, you know, because you could see people going like, you mean this guy wants to continue to want to save these guys? You know, we just lost you know, X amount of family members or whatever, that, that, I, I could just see it, you know, right. perfectly. And how much, two things, you just said Dominion Wars, which could have been the reason why the Romulans could not help themselves off the planet more. Could be. Because they could have lost too many ships in that. But yep. um, on top of that, like you said, where people are like, I don't want to help anyone else. We have to help us. And we see, we hear this around this country. Sure. Every election cycle, you know, yep. and it's, we're spending too much money on other people. We're spending now. They don't have money per se in the federation the way we talk about money, but well, it's still resources. It more and more. <laughs> we are, and it's. But it's, even if you don't have any money, you're still spending yep. resources and time, yep. which are more valuable than money in the way they've led us to believe up until now. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they're basically people are saying, "Well, we have to get, we have to get to Mars and see. I don't know. We might find out they were trying to find survivors, or they were." Trying mm-hmm. to get whatever survivors there were off world in the middle of a of war with synths. That, that attack may not have been the only attack. That might have led to a long, a years long war we don't know about. Right. right. You know, you don't, we so, don't know. You're right. I, I don't think they're going in that route, but you never know. I mean, and like you said, you attack a country, a world, a civilization, whatever, it's very easy to scare the people into isolationism. I brought this up a couple episodes ago, too. Yeah, yeah. I did a good job with that. Yeah. You know, we don't I, need to retract it, but I agree. Yep, yeah, it's yeah, very easy. Very, I don't, it's, no, it's actually normal. Right. I don't want to deal with the rest of the world. Let's just worry about us. Forget everything else. 
and that I don't think that's always the best option. I think World War Two that helped bring about World War Two. However, it's a very normal reaction for our country. Very normal to yeah. to to do, and um and that's what we're seeing in the Federation now is that they kind of went into an isolationist state, and Picard walking away, he went into an isolationist state when his worldview blew. Very ironic, and and I think that helped create the power vacuum that brings us to the show Picard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. you framed that very well. Thank you. All right, so, hey, these are good tangents, Warren. Yeah, when they're, they're <laughs> we're way off them, <laughs> but at least they're about the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, getting back to something a little more lighthearted, did yeah. you notice just how many holograms this ship has? Like, it's we've seen three already. Yeah, it's bizarre. I, I honestly wasn't sure if it was just one, you know, that did it, that that would go. It, it was confusing for a while for me, you know, the protocol piece and then the the emergency medical. Yeah, it's they're definitely shooting pretty forward ahead with the technology. It is it is interesting. Yeah, we because we have we have the emergency medical, the emergency um, navigation. We're in the first episode. We saw them, and now we have a hospitality. How what, what is an emergency hospital? Even they say it in the episode. How many emergencies could be hospitality wise? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. it's interesting. Yeah, but you know maybe um, I don't. Know. I, I, I I well we'll have to see where it goes. I was I was going to say maybe because he's by himself all the time, he's created more and more. Uh, but uh, I have no idea. Yeah, and he even says when he walks in, he drops an f bomb, but he's like, I effing hate that thing. Like, yeah. So turn it off. Yeah. I don't, I don't care what the problem is here and. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's me. I thought it was a little weird that Picard's quarters were made to look like his home. Yeah, me too. Uh, since he felt like he was never home there in the first place. Right. So why is this? I I would think he wants to feel like he's on a starship, not at a vineyard. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, it's uh, the writers it's, just it's, felt like they built a set. They need to use it more. I, I mean, that's exactly how I look at it. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it doesn't make much sense. No. But uh, whatever that that whole everyone walking in his room in that scene was a little frustrating in and of itself. But um, everyone just wants to like yell at him that at that moment. I, don't, I didn't whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you know, it it played out, and uh, <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah, but all right, it is what it is. Um, we'll probably see five or six more emergency holograms for things. I don't know what they'll be for, but we'll see them. Mm-hmm. Uh, back to high stakes. We then we we also find out in this, and Amy's gonna hate it. The stakes just went through the roof for the Romulans, but we have something called uh, Ganmadan, which is the Day of Annihilation. Yeah, yeah. So now they're all gonna get annihilated again. Well, yeah. I mean, I I kind of took it that as, you know, um, a religious thing more than anything else. You know. I, 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 you know, that this, this whole thing, you know, there's one in every religion, so to speak. So I, I just assumed that it was the same doomsday scenario that, you know, uh, you, you know, you, you could read about it yourself in the in the last chapter of the Bible if you wanted. It's right. About okay. All the things that are supposed to happen. I just took it as being very similar, but fascinating that they point to um, to Soji, right? Right. So. She she's the bringer of this day of annihilation. So mm-hmm. she's the one who sounds the trumpets. I mean, is that like? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, because it's it was interesting, and in that 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 piece definitely had a uh, a similar, I guess, framing as the picture of her and Dash did as well. I th- right, I th- that was interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's definitely. I don't know. I just I just know that Amy's gonna go crazy because she, she she hates these whole like universe ending scenarios. And here we're back at it again. But from a different perspective, it's interesting is this time the Romulans are trying to get rid of her. And yet Picard is now trying to find and save, in theory, the person who's going to end the universe. Yeah. When you say the Romulans are trying to get rid of her, you mean they're trying to kill her, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of that threat. Oh, I, I get it. Um, it is there. The whole thing is ironic. Um and it's actually playing longer than it, you know, I, there's been so much um, going back to tell the story. And like I said, I, I don't mind, you know, the dialogue and so forth. But 
pulling the whole picture together is moving at an incredibly slow pace.